AJ, I don't know what the bu this bullshit biasness is that you have to be buff to be a himbo. I think that's a load of shit. I am a big dude, uh -huh. and, I, and I am a himbo. I'm a himbo no, at heart. No, you're just a bear. No, fuck. I mean, that's also cool, but fuck it. No, I'm himbo energy. Who says you have to be buff to be a himbo? I think that is. I think that's. I think that's a load of shit. I, Blake. I don't make the rules. AJ, Unfortunately, I don't have AJ, the power to change those rules. When I look at you, rules. when I look into those, to those, the soft. Oh fuck, I forget. Wow. Do you have blue or green eyes? Uh, you have green eyes. Yes. Do you have, I? I think so. Fuck. I don't know why I'm forgetting. Oh shit. That, I feel like a bad how friend can, now. How can AJ, you forget the color of my eyes, bro? AJ, when I look into your nondescript eyes, I I, <laughs> I, I see himbo. I see I AJ, see a beautiful I, himbo man. When I look into your colored eyes. <laughs> When I, when they I look, shine like such a vibrant color. Uh, somewhere, Ooh, somewhere, they are so saturated. Those <laughs> eyeballs. When I look into your color spectrum eyes, <laughs> they sh they shimmer with saturation and and, and chroma. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Successor, a comedy video game design podcast inspired by Cool Games Inc. I'm your host AJ Hart, and I am your other host Blake Rea. Man, you know what? You were talking about like, oh, AJ, we need to slow down that intro. And yeah. I listened to you like say it without trying to burn through it like as fast as humanly possible, as it's though you were like, and it's silky fucking smooth, isn't it? It's really smooth, but I don't know if it's the energy that I want. You know oh, what I mean? Like, want to, I want to want be to do in again? and out. Yeah, you can I do get, again? get it from you one more time? But like <clears throat> hyperspeed, like I want you to be in, up here in here, like Watsky D or like uh, Tech Nine. Don't like, worry, you, I, I really need these things to be fast. Have you, and I powerful. have listened to the Hounds by the Proto Men. You know how fast they fucking talk in that song with such Less, power. Nowhere near as fast as Tech Nine. I can guarantee that. Uh, probably not. I mean, well, Tech Nine probably speeds up his voice. All right, here you go. Don't you <laughs> ever fucking say anything like that ever again. <laughs> Tech Nine would never. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Successor, a comedy video game design podcast inspired by Poke... Poo poo games. Poo -do 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 -do. <laughs> Inspired by Poo Poo Games Inc. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Cool Games Inc. I know I tripped up. I was so confident in it. <laughs> uh, for those that are new to the podcast, actually, wait, I got to talk fast because AJ says I have to talk fast. For those who are new to the podcast, we take your lovely ideas from Cool from, for, for Reddit, YouTube, you know what? Twitter. Here, here, See, bud? I can't. I can't do this. You I can't, can't do, do it. This. You got. You, uh, all right. Our our resident tech nine AJ the kick like ass. Me. All right, AJ the Watsky Heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, All right, mm -hmm. go ahead. Lead us in. Lead us in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Successor, a comedy video game. Fuck. See, see, when you're on the spot, it's fucking hard, dude. <laughs> it's because I'm like, we're not just rolling into you, it. You, you know and I, I would mean? never make it in rap, like at all. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Successor Company Video Games. They've, on heard, this, they've heard this like five times. Yeah, We're let's done. go ahead. And We're do done. It. We're they, done. We're you done. know We're what done. we do here. We take your lovely submissions from. Ooh, you I almost, almost said, said the fake one said. bad first. From Twitter, from Reddit, from email, mm -hmm. and we turn those video games into the next triple A titles. See, silk, silky smooth. Nothing wrong with that. Nice chillax. All right, AJ, can I give you the first game idea? You don't want to do a little like a little personal Blake and AJ check in. You don't want to see maybe the audience wants to know what we've been up to lately. Can I tell them about um, our Destiny stuff? Yeah, tell them so about Destiny. Blake and I played a video game together for the first time in like since weeks. Corn, like yeah, since like the last time we were playing video games together was uh, freaking that. Uh, we were playing Dark Siders 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 Genesis. Yeah. We're good about doing co op games like couch co op together, but this was the first time we've done like an online game together in months or yeah. years even. Well, yeah, since Fallout 76, probably. Oh, it feels Actually, like a Overwatch. distant memory. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that... Um with that, with all of our kind patrons, we've actually been able to build a little bit of a budget for our ads, and we scheduled some more ads with uh, advertising, um, and we actually had leftover. AJ and I just had enough leftover for both of us to buy season passes to Destiny Two. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Next season, we're buying those those good good season passes and that's all thanks to all of you we have that's, an ad on the way too so it's not like all that money's going to just like just uh, us blowing shit <laughs> but no we, we we love you guys we appreciate you but aj i want to give us a submission all right let's do the submission then all right 
let's get right on into the business. Ugh, I hate it when people intro things like that. Let's get into it. I have this new camera review. Let's jump on in. Like, God, dude. It's just like cookie cutter. I'm sorry. I'm I'm very heated That's about that. That's how I intro my videos for the scooter company that I work at. It's... And AJ, there's a reason they haven't gone viral yet. <laughs> All right. All right, fast. I, okay, I'm sorry. That was mean. I'm, no, I, you're right. I, no, no, you're I, right. I, I you should the, say it. I, I need these the thoughtful work you criticisms do, on my labor. No, I think the work you do is really cool, and like, and like the fact that you're doing that shit independently is pretty rad. And I shouldn't shit on you for that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This 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 post comes to us on Twitter from Hatchets at All D's Hatchets Reverse Honey Pop. Get their clothes back on. AJ, you know the thing <laughs> I hate when I come over to your house. You're just naked. You're just sitting All the time. there. You're just naked. And like, this is the thing. This is the, uh, this game is about having a friend who likes to be naked on their couch, even though they know company is coming over. <laughs> and it's about that awkward situation where you have to get your friend to clothes themselves. So AJ, how, yep. would I, how would I get you clothed so I don't have to look at your dingus? The same way you would get any normal American clothed, Blake. You have to give them a reason to leave their home. Mmm, so I'll, I can come up so and be like... So reverse honey pop is not about like trying to hit on people. Cause, so normal honey pop, you know, you show up and meet somebody at like a bar and you're like, I'm going to try to get you into my home naked. Yeah. This game is about like trying to get people excited to go on a date. Uh-huh. So it's like trying to get so people like, excited to clothe them, clothe themselves. Yeah, if you want me to put on my my super cool suit, you got to start hyping up what we're going, Blake. Where are we gonna go that I need to have pants on? Really, really quick question. So when they say reverse honey pop, is that only specifically the clothes part, or is like every single mechanic is the opposite? So instead of a puzzling game, it's an what's the opposite of a puzzle game? Pause. Is, what? Well, like Pong or Breakaway, you know the game where you have like the little ball that bounces around and you're trying to bust up everything. Oh, okay, so it's okay, so like, it's rather. Like, th I guess that would yeah. be like the opposite of matching things in Honey Pop. Yeah, I mean, like it. Okay, so let's just say it's that. So it's like, and I like that because that can feel like it's each thing is individual. Like every, oh, it's like Peggle basically. Oh hell yeah! So like, like Peggle. each each like person you're trying to date gives you specific power ups to your ball. So like there's multi ball, there's like um, super extra bouncy ball, or like you can like with the unicorn guy Fjorn. Wow, I played a lot of Peggle. Um, yeah, I don't remember <laughs> any of these characters. You don't remember they had like a hamster with a with a hard hat on that did like multi ball. They had a cool squid <laughs> that would like give you extra guns on the side. Wow, Peggle is fucking awesome. And there was also um, <laughs> AJ. You know, like how on the podcast we're like we're trying to come up with like evil enemies, and I just say it's the good guy's name backwards. Yeah. They did that shit. Like the main, the first what? guy. Yeah, they did that. Like the first guy um, was Fjorn. He was a good unicorn. And then I think like the evil guy in it was just Njorf. Like that was his name. Evil. Uh, hold on, let me look this up on you on Google so I don't make an ass of myself again. Yeah, I would really hate it if you looked like a big <laughs> idiot talking about Peggle too. <laughs> I mean, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> every gamer knows everything about peggle 2 dog yeah it's, like th those oh. are the those are the gamer backs that all games were built off of right like we've got like banjo kazooie master chief fjorn from peggle 2 oh wait actually okay i was wrong it's 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 nord Instead you of dumb, <laughs> stupid idiot. What the but, fuck? But you you come in here dropping Peggle heat and you're <laughs> fucking up this hard? AJ, Are you no, serious? Really, really quickly, really quickly. Look We're up. going to be absolutely murdered no. on the internet for being incorrect about these but things, see, Blake. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I corrected myself on the podcast. I only get called out <gasps> if I didn't correct myself at some point in the podcast. Like uh, you're, you think like a gamer waited that long to <laughs> get on you? Oh, no. Is somebody going to send me gamer mail? Like they're gonna say a You're gamer gonna get word. Gamer hate. <laughs> they're gonna <laughs> really quickly though. Really quickly though. Go go to Peggle Two for those listening too. Um, check out Fnord. It's F N O R D. It is a unicorn with a cool ass horn, an eye patch, and a mustache. He looks like Majima from fucking uh, <laughs> from Yakuza. Fnord. It's... Yes, F N O R D from Peggle. This does look like a horse version of Majima from Yakuza. What it's the just, hell? It's just Majima, dude. <laughs> okay, but coming coming back to our game, coming back to our game. This so, is Majima's fursona. 
So <laughs> that's that, that makes sense. I feel like he, his persona. I mean, he'd have a scale sona because he always wears the rattlesnake jacket. Yeah, but in he, he used to have a ponytail. Oh, when his hair okay. was all grown out. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, but coming back to our reverse honey. I hate game. looking at this nasty horse though. He's cool as fuck, actually. <laughs> he has a fun <laughs> laugh. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it's a game where it's kind of like Peggle, where you just have to like shoot the ball up and get as many of the icons there. And Each the more date... points you get, the more clothes you're going to put on my naked oh, bod. Oh, that's good. That's good. I like that actually. So, w- Honey Pop also has the memory dating mechanic. Yes. So is this just about like hurting your friend's feelings by not remembering anything? Like you, you just have to show you have to up choose and you the wrong answer. Them. And you drag them, and you just tell, admit to them that you don't know their birthday, and then they're going to oh. be like, "All right, fine." You know what? That makes me want to put I on my really pants. I really expected my you to come pants. over to my house, and I was going to be here with my pants off, and we we're just, you know, we we're going to fuck around and see what happens. <laughs> but unfortunately, you don't know nearly don't like enough the about phrase, me. See what happens when one person doesn't have their pants on. <laughs> that, that's like I don't just if I showed to you and you're naked, or like, let's see what happens. I'm like. This is innately sexual, and I am not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> this is not fun. I don't like that phrase at all. <laughs> well, you're only not comfortable because you have to admit that you don't know, like, when my birthday was, how big my bra size is. Oh, um, so whether it's like, I put my left sock or my right sock on first. And so, so now, because I know you don't know enough about me, I'm going to be like, all right. You made this bar sound really dope while also admitting that you don't know shit about me. Uh-huh. Let's go ahead and go. I'm going to go ahead and put on a jacket and some clothes. And you did so good enough. I'm going to wear closed toed shoes even. And we're oh, going to go God. somewhere decent you... and hang out. Okay. So depending on how well. Oh, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. So here's our gameplay loop. You show up to a friend's house. They're naked. You have to butt do a dialogue. Naked. They're butt naked. You have to do a dialogue sequence that's like trying, always picking the wrong things. So like, <laughs> like there will be like four, there will be like three or actually there'll be two facts up. So it's like a 50, 50 thing. Um, you have to remember. And as the game goes on, there becomes more and more options with each question. So it becomes harder to pick the right one, depending on how well you did in that dictates, um, like maybe the bonuses you get for the Peggle game. And then mm-hmm. during the Peggle game dictates how many, how much clothes they will get for your like hangout or your date basically. <laughs> so, and then when you go out on the date that will like, depending on how much clothes they have will dictate how well the date went or yes. something like that. Well, like depending on how many clothes they have dictates like what cool date you get to go on. Right. Like, oh, cause like, like if, oh- if you're only able to wrestle like, a uh, swimsuit onto them like okay well we have two options to where we can go the river or the um a pool like place and it turns out that person hates fucking water so you failed that mission but if you you're able to day. get me with like just to the nines mm-hmm. you can go to the ball you can go to the gala we can go to a gala hell yeah that's also a cool word by the way galas i love that word it is a good <laughs> word what makes a gala different than like a ball though i think they are the same thing i don't know here Simians let me check are fun and useless aren't they <laughs> i got another video game suggestion <laughs> hold on hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm look i'm looking i'm looking up the difference here uh the difference between ball and gala is that a ball is a solid or hollow sphere or ball this is you not, dumb stupid this idiot is, <laughs> this is not at all what i wanted to know <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> All right, give me a game. A ball is a big party. A ball is also a big party. Actually, a ball is fancier. So, like, a gala can just be a big ass party without, um, like, dress requirements. Well, oh, I guess I'm done a, referring well, to things as house parties. Then there are galas. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Come over to my uh, uh, after quarantine gala. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, give me a game, brother. I got a submission here from George L. Diaz at Ready Set Fire One Two Three on Twitter. What's up? Small town simulator. Okay, so uh, crazy shit happens in small towns. They have weird festivals for things that are kind of inconspicuous, like um, like sauerkraut, the sauerkraut yeah, festival. Yeah, when you come from a small town, you go to thing, you get hyped as shit for things like the sauerkraut festival. You get hyped <laughs> as hell when the county fair is in town. Oh my god, the county fair with the good lemonade and the curly fries, baby. Ooh, deep Ooh, fried butter. Fuck. I'm excited. 
You know, you, you, you get excited when you're cruising around your small town and you're like, where is the smoking jogger? Of course, everyone knows who the smoking jogger is. He's the guy that j- jogs while smoking. Oh, yeah. You told, me about, you told me about this guy. That's so weird. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and peel away the green curtain. These are all things from my ho- small town. Yeah, you, you hail town. from a small town. Small town... Uh, uh, St. Saint Saint Helens, yeah. already gone. It's, yeah. where they fil- it's where they filmed Halloween Town. Okay, so do we want to lean into that, where it's like a small town simulator? Because I feel like small towns right now are always like filled with mystery. Mystery, and like if you peel back the curtain just a little bit, there's something very weird or supernatural going on. So do we want to lean into there's that? There's nothing. There's a lack of anything, and that's why we get hyped as shit for the county fair, dogs. There so is nothing it, going so on in small towns. Is it like a is it like a Scooby Doo thing where you think there's something supernatural for the bulk of the game, but it just turns <laughs> out it's nothing? Like the sauerkraut festival's coming up, and somebody wants to wants to, root, to poison all of the other sauerkraut, so none of it's good. Here's is it like thing. something boring like that? Here, here's my issue. Whenever like the small towns are romanticized, it's always like the stupid shit about living in a small town that's romanticized, right? Like, mm-hmm. like Blake, name like four things that you think are really good about a small town. Um, everybody knows each other. Um, it is very quiet. I can, um, uh, everybody knows everybody's business, so Mm -hmm, gossip mm -hmm. is a thing, and they have really fun, like, annual festivals. Okay. This, the, okay. Really fun annual festivals, that is correct, but I don't, like, for sure. Everybody knowing everybody? Absolutely horseshit, not true at all. Nobody knew who the smoking jogger was. He just existed in the town. Okay, but how small was your town, though? Like, because, like, I feel like you can go... probably only, like, 3K tops. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. it was a small town, dude. Okay. Because I was thinking something like, like Castle Rock. Like, I don't know any other... That's not a real small town, I know. But, like, it's, like, kind of small to where... It's a everybody could fit in the city square kind of thing. So that's when I think small town, that's what I'm picturing. So how do we gamify this, though? Is this a we have to talk about the things that are actually cool about a small town, like seeing the smoking jogger. You get a couple points for seeing the small smoking jogger. Mm -hmm. You see Aquaman, the guy that pours water all over himself every couple of hours. (laughs) You get a couple extra points, but he's harder to find because he doesn't make the rounds through the town quite nearly as often as the smoking jogger. Are you telling me that small towns are just like living in a small town is like playing deadly premonition where you're just trying to figure out where people are at what times? Yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> just, just to have a little bit of entertainment in the day to be like, hey, you guys want to go stare at the smoking jogger guy and laugh at the irony? Sure. And like the other thing is like, oh, Blake, th- like the three type, the three most dope shit to do in my small town, right? Was like, bowl, do see drugs. a movie, <laughs> go to the bowling alley, play hide and seek in the Walmart. Oh, that's pretty fun, actually. I like there that. There was one time where there were four subways in my small town on one intersection. Oh, that's not funny. <laughs> that's, <laughs> it's actually, that's just, it's actually that's just very tragic. funny that there were four subways on one intersection in my tiny hometown. That's how who built how would you build that? Like that brings up so many questions because it's like, did they build four of them because it was like they wanted to maximize the effect or because Subway was so fucking popular for your small town? They were like, well, one business can't isn't enough. One business can't cover the 3000 people that want to eat marinara meatball. I have reason to suspect that they were trying to build a subway pentagram and summon a horrible subway demon. Hey, that's our fucking game, Subway Demons. <laughs> so, okay. the ga- small town the, the, simulator. Yes. You are a high schooler in a small town. Your uh-huh. job is to try to figure out what there is an actual mystery, but none of yes. the shit that you think is going to lead to the mystery leads to the mystery, right? Like smoking jogger. Nobody he's just a guy this. that smokes and jogs. Aquaman, yes. just a guy that likes to pour water all over himself. Mm-hmm. But they the do fact give that, you like, pieces they filmed of Halloween Town, and there was like a spooky thing that went like like oh Halloween Town's there, and uh, we celebrate every Halloween because it's Halloween Town now. Whatever. AJ, real real quick thing, because I don't know. This is going to make us sound really old, but I don't think some of our audience knows what the fuck Halloween Town is. Like I think that was everyone like, knows what Halloween Town is. It's no, my only cultural touchstone. I don't think so. That's the thing that scares me. Like You're is Hollow is Halloween Town like just like it's like our parents talking about how great Gilligan's Island was. 
for uh, how great like uh, or Sony and Cher was. You know what I mean? Okay, so you're proposing that for our generation, Halloween Town is the singularity where we become old. Yes. So what if like that's okay? Here's here's the story. Here's the story. So like this town is based off of your hometown, and it follows a group of kids that have no idea what Halloween Town is. But then they find, but then they find out that they find these weird, spooky, like abandoned sets, and they think some bigger thing is going on. So it's like a, and I'm picturing this as like a point and click adventure where you like walk into a room, you have to find like the thirty items in this room that combine into one like solution for a puzzle. I'm picturing it like that. Something like um, uh, Cursed Child for the Switch or, or other things. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like them thinking there's a bigger story here that leads to the Pentagram subway. So there's like a lot of misleading things that make you think it's like one thing, but it turns out they're going to summon a tomatoed monster. Subway actually really should summon a tomato monster to get their fucking tomato game right, though, is the thing. Like, that would be a really good thing that Subway like did. Toma- you don't like their tomatoes? Nah. Really? Well, I, I don't eat vegetables, so. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I have never touched a vegetable. I don't know how I'm alive. <laughs> Hit me with another video game. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hold on. Really quickly, I am uh, getting a call. Hey everybody, sorry about that. I am back. My brother was just Blake, calling me about back. about hot sauce stuff. My brother made me some hot sauce, which is really nice. Um, so okay, this one comes to, actually. This might I, I you got to tell me if this is the one you were thinking. I our Reddit popped off. Uh, we got like a bunch of people on the Reddit right now. Um, <laughs> this goes to us from I think this is a new person. Dystopian Prince uh, says made cafe simulate training simulator. I have to make a confession. What? You want to be a maid cafe person? I've already played this game. You have? What game is this? Well, it's not a maid cafe yet, but I'm slowly turning it into a bunny girl cafe. How's it going? AJ Hart here. I've been playing Yakuza (laughs) 0. Oh, that's right. You have a Hooters in this Yakuza game. (laughs) (laughs) You get to manage a cabaret club. I found it much easier to talk to my friends that don't know what a cabaret club is by saying it's a Hooters. Okay. (laughs) Because honestly, that's what a Hooters and a cabaret club is. You have somebody that's very attractive come and serve you and you you talk with them and you kind of hit on them and you go about your delicious chicken winged adventure. <laughs> Wait, so Yakuza actually- Zero has a whole ass mini game where you manage a cabaret club and you get to dress the girls up and you get to have little like conversations with them. But here's where the game's different: where the the Yakuza cabaret club manager and our maid simu- maid cafe simulator will diverge. Okay, so it's- in Yakuza, you can do special training with each of the girls. Hmm. But unfortunately, it turns into like a weird dating simulator thing. Like all of the dialogue is just there to like service the player. Like, ooh, the girl, the pretty girl's talking to you. Hey, AJ, and like a part of me is I, like, I hate to, yes, I hate to, yes, bre- yes, I hate yes. to break it to you, but this is pretty. Uh, <laughs> this is pretty not cool, man. <laughs> like, hi, I'm your boss. You have to go on a date with me. <laughs> yeah, that like That's it, it, it kind of like dude. bleeds into that. Like That's the main up. character doesn't hit on them, but like the girls uh-huh. are constantly hitting on Majima. Oh, who wouldn't look okay. at him? I mean, he's cool. He's got an eye patch and a sweet goatee. I don't I, want any of the girls in our maid cafe simulator to ever be hitting on you, the player. Uh huh. Like they so do like, in the Yakuza mini game. Okay. Well, how about this? Because I want to make this a little bit. I want to. I want to add a little bit of wrinkling to this. I want this to be overly aggressive maids, maid cafe. You know, you like want the, the ones mean girls. Yeah. Well, the ones that like do the hand thing that like put you in your place thing. I forget what it's called. It's co- they flip uh, you the bird. No, they don't flip you the. <laughs> that would be really good for because like one of the things they do, I think they do in maid cafes is like everybody says hello like the moment a new person walks in. What if it was where all of them turn to the person that just walked in and flips them the fucking bird, just make them feel really welcome? You know what I mean? So, so but the thing I'm talking about is where like they have you against a wall and they do the arm thing. Like that establishing dominance, like I, I forget what it's called. Our weeb friends would know, but yeah, I know um, what you're talking about. So like maybe that's maybe I'm talking about doing training like that, where it's a guy where a person could come in and the maids just don't take shit. 
So it's like kind of like not doing the gross servicey thing. You know what I mean? Well, so what's Don't the gameplay wrong. loop? Because like uh, my the gameplay loop I'm imagining right now is like a fun dress up game. Like you get to decide what their maid outfits are going to be. You get to decide what their hair is going to look like. When people come in, you kind of decide like, oh, I want like they this them? maid doing like bussing these tables. I want to make sure oh, that th- like okay. I've got these girls on standby. Like okay. I want like a business manager game out of this. But I also understand that we need to be training these girls. Mm-hmm. So okay, so you could do this thing. It, it feels kind of persona-esque where it's like you're doing a central activity which is like running this maid cafe and then you actually have to give time to where they study so they can increase their intelligence level and all that so it's like you have to set it's a separate activity that you have to set aside time for so by that means you have this really you have this one person who's really really good at bussing tables but they really suck at the cashier like they just don't know how to operate the tech so you have to like figure out the balance of okay i can have them bust tables all the time and just not have them being good at the cashier stuff or you have to like build somebody else's like bussing skills while she works the cashier so so what's like what does that training look like right like i think we're on the same same page of like there's going to be like a business manager it becomes live a protect- action it be- aspect where like people come in you're telling your uh the everybody where they need to be standing and AJ, where they AJ, need to be AJ, operating I, I already i i have this cracked my dude you know what you know what made cafes need dance quick time events i was going to say sword fighting but your idea is a little cuter both are both are good like honestly you can do if you get one of those like dance dance revolution dance mats from like the the mid 2000s you know like those ones that like crinkle and like are big heavy plastic you get one of those and then like say they go to the cashier thing it becomes a dance dance revolution thing where depending on how well you dance dictates how much skills they get (laughs) So, but then that applies to everything. Or it could be a thing where it's it's different. So, like, the sword fighting could be also on the Dance Dance Revolution map because it's, like, swords all about, like, your feet and where you are and all that jazz. What's another, like, mini game thing we could do for training? Hmm. You said, hmm, that's not good. That's not good radio. I know what Yakuza does for training. Uh, what do they do? There's like little discussion blurbs. That's the part where I was mentioning that like, so you would like have like a little like discussion chain with the girl and depending on how well Mm -hmm. you scored on the discussion depends on how much experience they get. That's the part of the game where it bleeds a little bit too into like fan servicey stuff for me. So, all right, real question. Do you want to keep it fan servicey or do you want to do a different thing? I want to do something different. I don't want this to be fan service. How about this? So if you're a if you're a boss to this company, I think one of the important things about being a boss is like connecting with your employees and remembering things about them. So what if you do a honeypop thing where like you remember details about them? You remember their strengths, you remember their weaknesses, you remember what they like. Maybe you take that stuff into account when you're doing like the dress up shit. You know this one specific character kind of hates this color or hates this sort of theme. So maybe you avoid doing that. So you kind of create this business synergy by being a decent person. Okay, so I see what you mean. So giving, talking to the girls and like doing those training sessions gives Mm -hmm. you actual explanations on how the girls operate in game. Yes, so that so way like, you can like you, maximize your maid cafe. Yes, so if you talk to the girl and then she like mentions like, oh, I'm actually like an all star like triathlon hobbyist, then you're oh, like, shit. oh shit, Stacy's got stamina for days. I want St- mm-hmm. Stacy busting tables all the time because she's never gonna get tuckered out, and because she's so agile, she can do the whole roller skate like thing. <laughs> you, you know, like I, I forget. Like, what are some places that do? Uh, like A W and so- yeah, Sonic. Uh, uh, for our European friends, Sonic is a fast food franchise where you park your car in the lot, and then you order food at this like little touchscreen thing, and then uh, a person 
rides out on roller skates uh, with a tray of your food and delivers it to you. It's yeah, pretty cool. May- maybe Stacy can't do that. Like Stacy's never going to get tired, but Stacy never learned how to roller skate. But if you so do enough discussions training? with Veronica, you can mm-hmm. find out that Veronica knows how to roller skate. <laughs> she, turns out she's and into you, roller derby. And she's if like, you, <laughs> yeah, she's like really good at it. <laughs> so if you purchase roller skates for Veronica, then that mm-hmm. upgrade will happen. But you'll never know what to do gameplay wise until you have those discussions with the maids Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is there a mechanic where you have to go outside of this cafe to hire people like is there or it's just like or is it like animal crossing where just like people will like are randomly shown up when you do something i mean it should absolutely be like animal crossing like it's random mm -hmm. so like you can figure out like oh like there's like a hundred different girls to choose from that all have different personalities, different interests, different abilities. So then you kind of just have to figure out, oh, then it's going to be so sad when you have to fire them, though, because it's going to be like really like they're going to be like, but this is my I love working here. Oh, that's going to be so heart wrenching, dude. I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts me. That hurts me real bad. But uh, that's good. It's good gaming. It's good gaming. <laughs> Dude, hell yeah. That's a fun game. Are you? Do you like that game? It's fun, but I don't know if it's got the legs that we need from a nug. Oh, yeah, that's fair. All right. Well, tell but don't me. you worry. I've got a nug here yeah, if you're tell ready me. for this nug heat. I mean, we just hit 35. I'd love to hear I'd love to hear your nug, and then we can do some lightning round if it is good enough. If it is, if it is the nug. While AJ is busy um, trying to fix his computer because he clicked out of things, I uh, want to let you guys know that we are keeping safe. Um, AJ and I are both uh, kind of healthy. We're both still working. Um, so things are good. Things are safe, and we, we hope you guys are all doing really well out there, too. And keeping busy, playing new games, playing all, watching good TV. We, uh, we care a lot about you guys. We've been thinking a lot like during this whole quarantine thing of all the things we want to do when we come back. And... You know, hopefully, hopefully make some more content for all you guys to see. And we really appreciate all the support you guys give us. Okay. I'm so sorry. That was a mess. <laughs> I'm a mess today. It's okay. It's okay. I got to sneak in a little thank you to the audience. I love I, I, our kind and, and fun audience. So here, this is a submission off of the spiritual successor Reddit, spiritual underscore Reddit. This submission mm-hmm. comes from Squid Pope. Oh, no. I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> A noir game, but you are a mall cop. Is, is Squid, Squid, did you put this submission because your name on Twitter is Squid Noir? Maybe. <laughs> so, okay. here's the thing. Uh-huh. Are you saying Paul Blart but noir? I don't incom- want Paul Blart. I don't want to inc- ape that brand. An incompetent uh, mall cop person who is obsessed with noir movies Might stumbles into his own. Might I propose to you something much better than than an incompetent cop, mall cop. Uh-huh, an overly qualified mall cop? A hyper-qualified, overly qualified, mega-qualified, super tactical, very efficient, super so, cop. So they who were... Who is stuck in the mall. Are, oh, it's like a fall from grace. Like, they were in Secret Service, but then they got burned. <laughs> then they got burned. Like, all their... They had to, like, start their life over or whatever. And they better, only better, job better, they better, be- better, 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 better. Okay, go ahead. He's still in the CIA. Oh, so wait, but this feels a little they bit like... They are a the... Secret Service op- officer, and much like in the movie, um, what's the one where uh, the lady has to be uh, a beauty pageant person to do good cop stuff? Miss Congeniality. Yes, Miss Congeniality. Much like Miss Congeniality, this is a <laughs> top officer, best of the best, that must now pretend to be a mall cop. Okay, well... This is starting to feel a little bit like that HBO series Barry, where he's like he's like uh he's like an assassin or something like that, but he, now he wants to be an actor and he's not a very good one. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that, but it's a very very good show. No, but that sounds very fun. But like I love that idea. It's like somebody that's like far too qualified to be doing any of this. Like somebody mm-hmm. that used to go on secret operations in like like I... like the, essentially like. Scarlet Witch is now having to do mall cop stuff and like I don't think him still being in the CIA is good because why like why stick around like I feel like the idea boss's orders I feel like the idea of like him president's being his daughter tie- is a mall rat 
<laughs> Thought I wouldn't get uh, that, huh? All right, all right, all right. You got me. You got me. You got me. Okay. So, is this? What are you thinking? This is like a. This is like. Um, fucking what's it called? Uh, the dead, the the mall game where you're it's a zombie apocalypse, Dead Rising, where it's like a third person thing where you have to go around and solve missions. Like, I want, is okay. that? I want to this, take the this Dead like, Rising um timer system, of course, mm-hmm. because I'm looking for any opportunity to put the Dead Rising timer system well, in literally it, no, any it, game we it ever make. It makes sense though, because if this is about protecting the president's daughter, hey AJ, here's here's here it is, here it is. It's it's Resident Evil Four meets Dead Rising. Both are zombie games, but you know, <laughs> there, there's no zombies in this. No game. zombies here. It's just like normal <laughs> crimes. Like you're going mm-hmm. to be running around the mall, and you're going to be like, you got to protect the president's daughter because she's going to be. You know, she's going to be at this food court at this specific time, and you know, some assassins are going to take take advantage of that. Then yes. you have this really cool, like fighting, like like super cool martial arts thing on. Uh, Oh god, you know be so cool. But uh, there's been some freeloaders that are hanging out and making a nuisance by the seas candy, and there was recently a burglary from the Fry's Electronics store here in the mall. I here's here's the thing though. If if it's about the president's daughter, I am can certainly say that mall cop the the CIA operative is going to say, "Fuck it, I don't care. I have one specific purpose." That's why I'm thinking but if then this he is would a, blow his cover. Well, eh, not really. Like he can do it. Like a mall cop, a mall cop shirking off the responsibilities to Kate. Sorry, let me take that again. Having... A mall cop shirking off the responsibility to keep the delicious chocolate and seize candy safe would yeah, not blow his cover. But I, it, the government would just fucking fix it. Like it, it. Here's the thing: if you have the government on your side, they, they, somebody else will come in and be like, "Hey, you can't fire this person." The CIA or they agent fire, or, must or, keep or, under cover because if the president's daughter finds out that the president still has a CIA person following every one of her steps, she's going mm-hmm. to be upset at her dad. Okay, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? Because obviously our CIA CIA guy has to be one of two things. One, they were hired as a fucking grunt, so they are being told by somebody way less competent than them to do their job. Or they are the head of security and they have to do a thing where it's a team management game as well is like going off and doing your own thing <laughs> so like say there are the hooligans behind the dumpsters spray panning and then there's an assassin about to kill the president's daughter while she's eating her tommy's chili cheese fries you have to then assign your team to the tasks that are menial while you go do the major ones it can't so it's be like, a team thing because it's a noir and like the thing about noir is like that level of isolation he can't trust anybody so okay oh, okay so let's let's look at noir tropes there is always a double cross so like i i feel like the government's gonna double cross president's him. daughter is of course evil it turns it turns out the president's daughter isn't really the president's daughter whoa the president's yes. not really the president. We're on some Kojima shit now. <laughs> holy, holy shit. Turns out the president's buff and you have to fight him as the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Metal Gear Solid thing. I, that's legit. Um, <laughs> turns out turns out the president's daughter's buff and that's the final boss. <laughs> now, hold on. You got the final level. <gasps> the final level is is that the daughter got hold of the president's nuclear launch codes, and you have to weigh <laughs> you have to weigh the like the options of killing her or like capturing her. Okay, so okay, no, this That's works. The double now. cross. We That's are the a noir. CIA agent that has that we are trying to protect the president's daughter while also investigating the president's daughter. That is why we cannot let anybody know that we will be busted. President's mm-hmm. daughter is a mall rat. Maybe a traitor. Mm-hmm. Turns out she's uh, working with other people in the mall as like, because you know like how malls have like those subway networks like behind the stores? I don't know if you've ever been in them, but they're really creepy where it's like behind, because like when people who work at certain stores, they can either go in through the main entrance or they can go in through the employee area, which is like this network of hallways that are behind all of the stores. So maybe it becomes a thing where like once you're in that area, it becomes like a sneak game. Yeah. That's where like all of her and her uh, cohorts are hiding. Yes. So like it's a, so it's like a, is this like a sneak game? Is it like, because I'm trying to figure out like what's the bulk gameplay because like Dead Rising is you pick up a variety of weapons and take on things. Is it like you have to figure out how to maintain your, 
identity by solving smaller crimes in between the major president's daughter things. Okay. So like, yes, we're going to take. Okay. We're, I don't know what the. F- I think we're going to need to take another play page out of Yakuza yet again. I'm sorry, uh-huh. it's not my fault. It's just that Yakuza is the perfect. You, you've game. been playing that game a shit ton, so it's understandable. <laughs> so here's the way it works. Yes, yes, there's 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 cases that are going to pop up like Dead Rising that you need to make sure that you're solving so that you can continue like. This you facade have, you have like that a you cover are meter, and like as mm-hmm. the day goes on, you need to make sure that your cover meter is being filled, like, and that you are doing your job as a mall cop to make sure that you're not rising any suspicion. Mm-hmm. And it's like super, super tight. Like you need to, and some of these cases are ongoing too. They're yes. like little, like like you're solving little things because, like in Dead Rising, it's like it's one mission, it's done, and then the major mission that goes over. I want to do and a the bunch cases, of little sub stories and the ca- yes yeah, sub stories. The cases mm-hmm. are going to be sub stories that all fall in like Yakuza. They're gonna they're all already generated. They're all mm-hmm. already written. Mm-hmm. They're going to be sprinkled into the mall over the course of the game, and they're going to be some whack shit in there. Right? There's gonna be one where you have to like box the mascot of some like fries electronics there's going to be mm-hmm. one where <gasps> oh you there's discover like actual a, fighting a secret underground sees candy that is selling illicit drugs and so you have to keep Whoa! Block that. there's going Holy to be shit, that's, one that's where like radical. a little boy's lost in the mall so you have to run through the entire mall trying to find the little boy's family mm-hmm Oh, that'd be super cool. There's like, and there's like, you find out there's this cult community that's living in like the network. Yeah. Uh, there's like the underground sub- network of stuff. There's going to be a sub story that exists for like one mission where there's a ghost in one of the stores. Like <gasps> it's just like oh, dumb little that. shit that you're running oh, around this so mall cool. having to do little mini missions for. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, it'd be kind of cool too, that I wish they did in Dead Rising that we could apply to this game. Yeah. Depending, because like one of the things of Dead Rising is you can hardly, it's so hard to do every single case because the time span is so tight. Yeah, same on what this, Graham. What if you do a thing where if you don't solve cases, certain cases, it makes the central storyline harder to do? Like, for example, you know that the assassination is going to be happening in the food court, that there's going to be a sniper on the roof or something, but if you didn't solve a case earlier where a bunch of kids are graffitiing the roof. When you go up there to investigate, there's a bunch of construction workers or cleaners. So now the sniper is in a completely different location than what you were informed on. So now yeah. it becomes like a find them game. So it just well, like little I things. I also that like the idea it. that like, okay, it makes if you the don't world have alive. your, I also like the idea though, that if maybe your, your cover gauge isn't big, like if you haven't mm-hmm. been doing sub stories or if you've let too many sub stories pass away without doing them, mm-hmm then like the overall gauge of you being allowed to be noticed by the president's daughter or by other like criminals, Mm -hmm. like they're more likely to be like, Hey, that's a CIA agent. That's not a mall cop. I was thinking like authority. Cause like you can do it like an authority meter where it's like, if you let so many cases go by, nobody trusts you to get anything done. So like get a game over and you'll have to start over again. Like dead rising. That's or it could be like, say you get up to that roof where all the cleaners are. If your authority meter isn't high enough, you can't tell you can't tell them to leave. So like they won't listen to you. So, or like if you're trying to find some kids or it locks off interrogation questions. Like if you don't have enough of a presence when you want to get specific information, you can't do it because you're just not a high enough level. So you it makes getting information harder. Yes. Okay. We need to talk about what the game feels like, though. Yes. I'm like, imagining I'm, it I'm plays p- like, and I didn't... Okay. I just I'm picture imagining like, like a what third I person. think this game plays like, and mm-hmm. I want this game to play like what I imagine Alan Lake, Alan Wake Alan, plays like. Alan Wake, where it's like it's like a lot of cinematics, basically. Well, there's going to be a lot of cinematics in this game, uh, for sure. In, like in for all of the sub stories and stuff with and Alan like, Wake, because like that's by the way, that's one of my favorite games of all time. I want it like, to be a I third person it. shooter where a flashlight is a big deal, and like mm, you Please, don't have a lot of. And really quickly, maybe you have like three taser shots for the day. I apologize. That is my cockatoo in the background. What's uh, up, he Bentley? likes to yell. He's, he's, he's a very yelly bird. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're saying you have like, oh, are you saying there's like night and day missions? Yes. Oh, that's radical. So like maybe Ooh. the gameplay changes too, because like, what if like, oh, you know, be really cool. The, um, 
you are the day guard. You are not the night guard. So anytime you're at the mall during the night, it becomes a complete sneak game. You can't be noticed by the security guards on detail or it'll be like, hey, why are you here? Why, why would you are... be sneaking down? I mean, of course, there are going to be missions where you do need to do sneaky missions down well, there. Well, you find out like the cult or the underground um, druggy sees candy only meets during the night. They don't sell during the day. Are you kidding me? Like the only like you have to come back like you get like a note of like during the day like hey this this thing is happening at this time tonight mm. you can choose to, you can choose to go like once once your shift is over because like you, you have like this is your shift so it could be a thing where it's like you can decide like okay are you gonna sleep the night or are you gonna go investigate the thing during the night and if you don't sleep during the night you actually get you get you lose like bonuses the following day yeah like your stamina will run out fr- yeah, faster so because you, have you can't to, you have sprint to, because you didn't sleep last night yeah because you were busy doing the thing so it's like you're you'll have to value hey am i gonna have enough stamina to do the fight sequence tomorrow or like the potential fight that's going to happen or am i going to and uh, or am I going to uh, sleep tonight and get all of those things at the cost of reputation because a yes. case was failed? Hell yeah. Okay. So just to run down from the top to the bottom, what we have here, we have a third yes. person shooter where you are in a large mall and the mm-hmm. key story is a noir story about a CIA agent investigating the president's daughter. Mm-hmm. Over the course of the game, like there will be like big, well cinematic, like strong cinematics, good story for this investigation of like, is the president's daughter uh, someone that really needs to be suspected? Who is she Mm -hmm. keeping pace with? All of those details is all going to be super good. And we're going to bang out what that story is. Mm -hmm. It's super good. It's super heartfelt. And it's full of mystery. The actual a- gameplay loop is you running around this mall trying to hit timed sub stories. These mm-hmm. sub stories are where you're going to get most of your experience, where you're going to get most of your like actual gameplay time. Mm-hmm. And, and then you feels- also get you also get sweet costumes that you can swap between to be like, <gasps> yeah. hey, oh, but here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. You have to do certain cases to get co- uh, outfits from that store that you can then use as disguises disguises. yes 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 yes. so you have to be like oh if i get the seize candy disguise early in the game on this one mission that doesn't involve the drug under like the drug thing that costume will come in handy when you have to like sneak in there do that that sub story later on yes 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 yes. yes. and there's also a thing of like you um i also picture this mall being a little bit more turbulent than most malls because it would explain why you have the taser it would explain why you are able to use a little bit more physical force like during this <laughs> this is like this is like a this is like a mall in new york where there's like theft is a common thing there's mugging there's like these things that actually require you to be a little bit armed basically yeah so because like a, a we get I don't necessarily Not armed think with anything dangerous, just like a mm-hmm. beanbag gun or something. Yeah, because like I don't think. Oh god, a beanbag gun. Because like I don't picture too many gunfights going on. Actually, no. Wait a second. Like there will be gunfights because like if you're doing this, like if you're there's gonna be a gunfight at the sees candy thing. And it'll yeah, but just that's be gonna like, be like a story thing. Okay, here's. <gasps> I cracked it. Okay, so you, there, I mentioned that like it's a, there's a little bit of like an RPG thing. I think that when you mm-hmm. start the game, you are armed with a flashlight and a beanbag gun. You mm-hmm. only have three shots ta- in the beanbag gun. Let's say a, t- a taser. A beanbag gun is like for riots. <laughs> So okay. like, let's say like a hand taser, like you have to come up and tase somebody. Different sub stories will give you different items that you can use for combat or for defense. You know, like that's going to mm-hmm. be like. If you do enough missions and for if you finish the right fries electronics missions, mm-hmm. maybe then you can get what would be a like a you get like a signal you, you, you get, get a, you get a cell phone jammer or a signal jammer. So like if you know somebody's trying to make a call that oh here's the thing you go into um like you find out the drug I'm just using the seized candy thing because it's just something we have you find out if you go in there and start popping off shots they're going to call in reinforcements and make the game harder so if you have that signal jammer you'll be like you turn on the signal jammer before you go into the room clean the room that way they don't like when somebody makes a call they can't call for reinforcements yeah I'm trying to think about like what the combat feels like well, I think it's like Resident Evil. It's just like you have your you have a variety of weapons that you can swap between. And okay. when you are technically investigating something that's n- like not as the security guard, but as like 
just a CIA agent, you can use all the force you want because like nobody will be able to trace it back to you. Oh, so, like, that's a good point. So because it's like during the night is when all the gunfights happen, and then okay. you know, like you call in like the 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 like the crew. Um, like the then there's crews. like your CIA gear set and when you go into mm-hmm. like a CIA level mission like you open up the the wheel and like you have like armed to the teeth like all sorts of different like com- like lethal gear you can use because you're a CIA mm-hmm. agent and the rules are off and then there's Independ- your mall cop gear wheel and that's mm-hmm. going to slowly be added to over the course of the game. Those are like non-combative stuff. Yeah, that's going to be where you get your cell phone jammer, your taser, mm-hmm. your... Um... Oh, and we should do a thing where like we should uh, swap it to where like um, it turns out like something happened in the middle of the night that required you to... Uh, that knocked you out. And so you wake up and the mall is slowly opening and there's people in there, but you're still strapped to the nines and all of your weapons. <gasps> so you have to like figure out how to avoid people. Yeah. But also the same thing could happen to where like you overslept or something and now you're in, now it's night where there's like people walking up and down the lanes with guns, but all you have is your taser. So like that would make some of the nights a little bit more challenging than the others, right? <laughs> yes, yes, Because you're, yes. like, you're caught with your like, w- with your pants down basically. Dude, this is fun. I'd play the shit out caught, of this game, actually. Caught with your badge on. Caught with your badge on. <laughs> hey, there's the name. Caught with your badge on. <laughs> <laughs> caught with your badge down. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, you could just uh, mall cop. You could just do mall cop noir. Or like you could just go with something. Uh, what are some other noir game names oh fuck we should take some bosses because we're coming up on the hour mark we should do we some bosses up from on our hour. discord this is the nug for... this is the nug hands down yeah dude all right i don't think we can do any lightning round stuff because we we no, got we're, we're we got coming up really let's go ahead and look it. at some boss fights oh hell yeah these will be like some of the store owners or other things for those that are new uh on our discord we do a thing called boss fight where uh our 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 discord can submit like boss fight ideas like people things um <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i've got a submission here from philip k on our discord uh-huh they suggest dio brando oh god there's a vampire there's vampires at this fucking mall dude i was going to suggest that there's a there would be a sub quest where you run into a bunch of cosplayers and all of the cosplayers <gasps> there are all jojo's people <laughs> <laughs> they're all just it's jojos and josuke's and yeah uh, Dio. <laughs> they're all delinquents and they're causing no, a big wait. mess in the mall aj aj it's it, they're cosplayers but they're only they only cosplay dio all of the different incarnations of dio so you have phantom blood dio who's just a, <laughs> who's just a delinquent teen then you have part three dio which is um, the badass, like has hearts on him, and then you have God Dio. So it's like a, it's three Dio delinquents. And if you beat this sub quest, you get the stone mask that Dio had, so that oh. you can put a mask on, and people won't recognize who you are for a little bit. <gasps> oh, that's radical! The stone mask. Hell yeah, dude! I love that. <laughs> okay, I have another one for you. Um, there's a T Rex with two guns, but also ga- that one came from Deku Scrub, and then another one. Um, from Gaz or T-Rex but super cut does that mean like super buff yes I was really thinking T-Rex I was thinking we do a little bit of a thing because I know you have like a weird fear about this but remember small soldiers where the toys come alive yes we <gasps> should do a thing where like the toy store we find out it's like a toy story situation where they're coming to life and the big centerpiece of the store <laughs> is this T-Rex is this buff T-Rex with two nerf guns that he swaps yeah. out for machine guns so there's like this level where you have to like clear out the mall of all of these toys with like guns and knives and shit so it's but you have to clear it out before you before the night ends because there will be like because like they'll run amok and kill the president's daughter tomorrow or something. I want it to be so clear. All of these subquests are going to feel like they take place outside of the reality of the noir story. Yes, I like, totally agree with like, you. I totally it is going agree to be the kind of game where like fighting a T Rex that has two machine guns is going to feel like like, but AJ, like oh that's just a sub story. But then in the actual story, like there's going to be a scene where somebody gives the president's daughter a gun. And that's that, and like in that moment where somebody is given a gun, is going to feel like the most 
table turning situation I've you've ever seen yes, in a story. I totally, I the totally, noir it, it, stuff is going to be so heavy, and the he, sub stories are all goof ass wild here's, shit. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. The core story is good noir storytelling. <laughs> the, si- the side quests are goofy noir tropes. So like the T Rex turned could up have to like, twenty seven. Yes. So it could be like the T Rex actually has like one of those like pin top fedoras and it talks like a gangster like are you telling me i i would love a game that is just like a buff t-rex dual wielding tommy machine guns and talks like a gangster like that's just the, the oh my god i'd play the shit out of that the like, actual story is going to have a moment where somebody like pushes parks a car in the wrong spot in a mall and it's going to feel so horrible and it feel like it impedes the main character's progress so much he's going to be sitting there like i can't go into that part of the mall there's a car parked in front of the door yeah it's the car because they're, they're immediately prepping it. afterwards you're going to do a mission where you have to gun down 27 vampires in the dead of night oh my god i love like, that that's the duality of the subquests from the main story it's the dios all trying to become real vampires and somehow they <laughs> they they they, they go to Hot Topic and discover some sort of like vampire thing to that they can put on. They suddenly become vampires. So then it's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, you know what would also be really cool? The way like kids' malls have like skylights, right? Yes. They're all just Venetian blinds. So like all of the pool, <laughs> all of the pools of light are just look like window blinds. And it's just really contrasty. And you could also do a thing where like maybe during the night it becomes black and white. So like during the day, it's for that one mission where colorful. you take on the vampires, the whole world gets a black and white <laughs> like, yeah, filter dude. over it. Oh, and their eyes, you know, like in Dark Souls, where like if you come up against a boss that has red eyes, it does that thing where it like leaves the trail of red light when they move that's how the vampires move they look they're like kind of skittery and like like they're covered in smoke but as they move they leave the light trails of their eyes oh fuck that's cool as hell okay that's too and good we are possible. somehow going to make that feel super impressive and like super fun and then also this will be a game where the reveal that the president's daughter has a sister oh, oh my shit. god oh my oh, god shit. what uh-huh and oh, it turns a second, out, what? And it turns out she's going to sacrifice her for some unknown reasons. Yeah, she's selling mm-hmm. her out for some sort of financial game, game well, maybe. Obviously, uh, something to like... Uh, no supernatural like, elements in the main story. No, <laughs> it's just... It is a, a super it. grounded uh-huh. noir. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, dude, I love it. Okay, <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet. That's a fucking game. We got to come up with the title. Is it caught with my badge down or like... Uh, Mall Cop Noir. Because, like, we can go, like... Might I suggest something that leans a little into, like, the terminology for mall rats and, like, trying to, like, be the de facto leader of, like, the mall by being this mall cop? Mm Mm-hmm. Mall Rat King? Mall Rat King? Um, Mall Rat King? Because if... I feel like that has a level of, like, horror and body disgust that maybe we don't want to lean into. Yeah, because, like, here, here, how about this? How about this? I'm going to read you some noir movie names, and hopefully okay. that might get you some stuff. Okay, the double, me. The Double Hour, The Crimson Kimona, Vertigo, Touch of Evil, Elevator Gallows, The Killing, the Sweet Smell of Success, The Man Who Knew Too Much, Sunset Boulevard the um what's the name of that other one where it's like the uh, the falcon like the black falcon or uh fuck i forget the name of it it's like the it's the one it's like the thing where like they have this falcon piece but it has like the secret codes maltese in it falcon? the maltese falcon so stuff like that where it's gotcha gotcha can, gotcha mm-hmm. would hmm Here, here's here's an idea Mm -hmm. you could take a noir word and I can take a shopping Mm -hmm. or like some sort of like mall or shopping word. Okay. I got one for you then. Okay. Let me think about one. All right. I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. Strangers. Outlet. Strangers Outlet, strangers. outlet? Strangers outlet. Ooh, I like that. Outlet strangers or strangers outlet. I like strangers outlet. Ooh, all right. Is that our t- is that our name? That's the name. Yeah. Strangers Outlet. Hell yeah. It's a little. I like that because it's a little bit like Nuari. It's a little fancy. A little Does outlet feel like a mall enough word though. Mmm. Because I was thinking of like an outlet mall. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. Um. 
Oh, I got one for you because there the uh, the mall near my house is called the Northridge Plaza. What about Strangers, Strangers Plaza? Plaza? Fuck Strangers Plaza. Yeah. Strangers Plaza. Fuck yeah. There we go. That's our name. Strangers Plaza. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Holy shit. I love it. This is a cool ass game and I'm super excited about it. That's a good game. Oh, yeah, dude. Are we ready? Are we ready for patch notes? I'm ready to go to patch notes. All right, buddy boy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to patch notes. It's me, your boy, AJ Hart. Oh shit! Here again with some notes. Okay, what are your no- what notes you got for us, buddy boy? Um, today the notes that I kind of want to say is uh, Blake and I are kind of on the cusp of doing a bonus episode for all of you. Uh, our Patreon is really, really close to our first goal. And if we do hit that anytime soon or whenever we do eight years from now, (laughs) (laughs) we're going to be doing a special bonus episode for everybody. Uh, We're going to be doing a special bonus episode where we're going to do what we do best. And that is, of course, steal somebody else's style. And we're going to steal the format for an episode (laughs) of Story Break. And we're going to kind of sit down and hash out what a movie would look like for an hour. For those who don't know what Story Break is, it's uh, a bunch of a bunch of screenwriters get together and have one hour to break the next big. Um, I was going to say AAA movie, but that's not <laughs> at all what that is. Um, but yes, we're going to be doing that, but we're going to try and put our own spin on it with um, audience interaction, kind of make it our own, and we think it'd be a really fun bonus episode to do because it's it's very similar to what we do. It's just movie themed. So yeah, we would, we would sit down and try to burn through what a movie would look like for an hour. It'll be mm-hmm. cool. Uh, we're going to do that as a special bonus episode uh, when we hit that benchmark, which we are really close to. Yeah, we're so- only like six bucks away, so... I if figured feeling, it might be nice kind. to just drop that here. Yeah. AJ, what's our music? Our intro and outro that we use is Cheap Shop by Anna Monaguchi, an excellent song from an excellent band for an excellent game that's still not released here in the United States. I mean, it was. It's just, like, not available anymore, which is sad to say. But you could always read the books. The re- the, the, the colored editions by uh, Oni Entertainment is really good. Read the comics. Read the movie. Because you ain't going to get the game. AJ, you don't, AJ, you don't read movies. <laughs> I've never watched a movie. I only read movie scripts. How did you do your David Fincher class? Read a lot of those scripts. Oh, my God. Okay. You never, I never expected David Fincher's uh, crutch word to be... And? Despondently. Despondently. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a fun word. I like yeah, it. Yeah, that's his crutch word. He uses it all the time. Uh- <laughs> All right, everybody. I've been one of your hosts, Blake Rea. And I've been your other host, AJ Hart. This has been Spiritual Successor, and these are cool games that should not be made. <laughs> <laughs>